Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make caldo de res. Uh, let me translate that for my English speaking friends. It is a beef soup. It's a very popular beef soup in Mexico. And one of the wonderful things about this uh, soup is that it's very relaxing after you consume it because you're going to be using some bone, some beef bone, and the beef bone allows that melatonin to kick in your body, so you're going to be pretty relaxed after. It's great if you're feeling a cold coming on or you feel your family is getting sick. There's a lot of nutrients in this particular soup, and also, you guys know how we get down on uh, our views cantina. This is great for a hangover. So um, I'm super excited. I talk about this uh, often, or maybe I think about it often, um, but I'm going to make it into a smaller portion so that you guys can make it and not have to stress out because usually when we make this in Mexico or Mexican culture we use a big pot like the one I showed you guys for the tamales and we fill it to the top and let me tell you to the last drop is delicious so we're gonna be using um, all the ingredients are gonna be in detail in the description area if you guys have questions I'll start seeing them and then I'll add it to this particular video in the description area If you don't know the description area it's right below the video there's a little arrow press it and it'll expand it okay so now that I've said that, let me show you uh, what kind of bone we're going to be using because I don't want you guys to confuse it for the menudo bone, which is also great for falling asleep <laughs> and for your tummy. But this one's a little bit different. This uh, bone that we're going to be using, it's the bone from the whole body of the cow. And the one for the menudo, it's just like the hoof. Is that what you call it? Yeah. So yeah, that's what we're going to be using. This bone, um, I'm going to give you guys the measurements and if you need to make bigger portions, just add the pounds from the bone and the beef to adjust to your needs. The type of bones that we're using for this particular recipe, it's hueso de res. And how do you translate that, Cloud? Uh, they are beef soup bones. Beef soup bones. They are... This particular piece is called uh, chocosuela, I believe. And if I need you guys to ask your uh, butchers for a different style, if you go to like a Mexican place, a Mexican butcher, I'll leave uh, those suggestions in the description area. But now that I've, you know, given you a little introduction, it's the one that has the bone marrow. In most butcher shops, you can't just roll up and ask for that and expect to get the best pieces. No. You have to build a good relationship with you your You really do. <laughs> if there's a tip jar, leave them a tip. Make sure to smile. The other thing that I want to say <laughs> is that these gentlemen at the butcher places, they're chopping meat all day. Dress up accordingly. Like, that's how you... This is how I can say that you get the best bone is if you show up smiling, happy, just be agreeable. That's how you're going to get what you want. I mean, that's, that's life, right? So make sure you take a shower, make sure you look good, <laughs> and ask for your, your hueso for caldo. That's what we use it for. So now that I've showed you the bone, let's go ahead and uh, prop it into this pot so that we can get this deliciousness started. Because to tell you the truth, this is great for when you have cramps too, ladies. This is a great caldo for that. Every I have not met one person that doesn't like this soup. So. When your suegra is in a bad mood, make her some caldo de res. Yes, and she'll go straight to sleep right after because <laughs> all that love that you put into the sopa is going to be in her what? soul. Woo! Put her to sleep. <laughs> Come on, guys. Before I add it in, I got to show you how beautiful this bone. This bone is so delicious, the bone marrow. And one of the things with this particular recipe is that you want to try and get your bone fresh. If it's frozen, it's going to take you a bit longer to cook. So to your boiling water, you're going to add your hueso, your bone, your beef bone, okay? And yes, I have already uh, rinsed the bone. Make sure to wash it. And don't get, don't get uh, scared, you guys. I have all the measurements that I'm using to the pound in the description area. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bring this up to a boil, okay? And we're going to boil this for about one hour. But don't go just yet. I'm going to be adding a little bit more water to my pot. That's why you need a big steep pot or a big round one, somewhere where you can put a lot of liquid. The amount of liquid that I use will be in the description area. This is boiling water, right? This is boiling water from the little kettle. Anytime you have something boiling and you want to add more liquid to it, you're going to have to have it hot boiling water, okay? And the thing is that bone is going to, that bone is going to absorb a lot of that water. It needs a lot of that water to break it down, so that's why you need to have a lot of water in your pot. The point here is a lot of water. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to boil my uh, beef bones at a high temperature. The reason I want them to be high is because it's going to start boiling all the impurities to the top and those are the ones you want to, the little bubbles, those little dark bubbles, those are the ones you want to skim uh, out. And if you guys don't have a skimmer, make sure you look in the 
uh, Amazon store that we have. We have a link in the description area and I'm really liking the skimmers. So if you guys wanna see um, when I'm ready to skim this soup, uh, I'll show you guys. So it's gonna take about 15 to 20 minutes so you can start seeing all those impurities rise and we're gonna skim them out. So I'll see you guys when I'm ready. Skim them out, skim them out, skim them out. <laughs> okay, so my bone is pretty fresh so I'm not getting that many like impurities. I did have some bubbles but I didn't come through here too quick and I have a little bit of the fat which I'm okay with the fat it's just certain like little impurities you want your broth to be nice and clear. And just begin skimming. I used to love giving this to the kids when they were toddlers. Um, they used to go straight to bed after a carrito. Yes, they, they were. were so cute. They used to eat everything, even the, um, like get the bone marrow uh -huh. and put it on a tortilla and yes. give them little bites from that. It has so much vitamins. Yeah, it does. So parents, when it's that winter time and you guys need so much, so much. But if you you guys need a little bit of me time and your couples, make sure you guys give your kids cuddles on Friday nights. Yeah, they're gonna sleep like babies. Say goodbye to the Benadryl. Yeah. Give something natural. Natural, guys. Keep it nice for the kids. And luckily, my kids love caldo. <laughs> <laughs> Babe, if you're watching, hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, hombre, se pasa. And I was thinking, me and you could have a little date night. Yeah, we do have date night, too. And Robert doesn't even care. He's so no, he's sweet. Like, you girls have fun. Have fun. <laughs> you guys need any snacks? I know, he's so sweet. Yeah. Thanks for all the snacks, babe. All right, so I'm gonna continue to boil this for another 45 minutes and I'll see you guys when we're ready to add our meat, yeah. Okay, we've been boiling our beef bones for about an hour. I've already skimmed as much as I need to skim. I went in there periodically to check and we ended up with some really muggy stuff. I ended up with about a cup. So once you're done skimming and your bones have been boiling for an hour, now it's time to add our beef and a few other ingredients that we're gonna be putting in our pot right now. But before I get started, I wanna let you guys know that your beef should be cut to pieces like if you have little tiny babies little kids you want to cut them into smaller pieces if you have adults you probably need bigger pieces because the point of putting our beef pieces into our soup are we want some good pieces because it's going to end up kind of like shredded beef so when you're when you're scooping it with your spoon it kind of just shreds apart on its own and um you can just you know add it along so the pieces i'm going to be using are about this size okay put it against my hand so you guys can see Pretty tiny, thin little pieces. So on that part, just make it comfortable for your home, something that you enjoy. And now that we've talked about that, let's go ahead and start adding our ingredients. Okay. If you guys see, our water went down about an inch from the rim. So if you're gonna need a little bit more water, this would be the time where you add some boiling water, okay? So what you're gonna do next is you're gonna add your salt. it around a bit and now I'm going to start adding my pieces of meat. Remember that soup has a tendency of healing souls or ailments or, you know, sometimes when we're feeling a little bit sad. So if you guys are making soup for your family, make sure to put a lot of love, pick good ingredients, do the best that you can and make sure you're you're just happy along the way. Get some good music going. Give this to someone that's heartbroken. Yeah, do that and then listen. Be a good listener. Give them a bowl of soup and listen, okay? So what I'm gonna be adding to my broth, I'm gonna be adding some uh, Mexican style green onions, but if you have the regular green onions, maybe pick about two, pun two bunches <laughs> because these are pretty large. You know, when you have your carne asada, these are the ones that we use, and that's what we're gonna be adding. We're also gonna be adding a whole garlic, and all I did was take some of the outsides off like this so they're easy to come apart, you don't have to, and I just chopped the ends so those flavors of the garlic start uh, infusing into our broth. And then this is optional. I have a huge, for some reason, my Anaheim pepper was massive. Look at that. It's pretty long, right? <laughs> so you want between one or two, and this just adds a really good flavor uh, to, your, to your caldo. So this is going to be optional, but that's what we're going to be adding. So I'm going to add my garlic, my green onion, which I'm going to just 
find a way to groove it in there. I love those green onions. Me too. I love the flavor it gives uh, the caldo because if you use other type of onion, it kind of just changes the dynamic of the broth, you know? Mm -hmm. And this is the flavor that I enjoy and I hope you enjoy it as well. So go ahead and continue to cook this for another hour on medium heat, okay? And while we're waiting for this to continue its delicious process, we're going to go ahead and start chopping some vegetables. Okay, it's been an hour, our beef is ready, and once it starts falling apart, you just know that that's the time that your beef is ready and you're ready to add your vegetables. So it should take you about an hour or so, depending on how big you cut your slices of uh, beef. So, with that being said, what I do with my green beans is I tie them in a little bundle because most of the time when you make your, your caldo, your cocido, uh, you end up digging for your green beans. I don't know if you guys have had it where you're like, where is it? You know, so I get a little uh, string and I tie them up into little bundles. And then for the cabbage, all I do is I chop it up into fourths and I put it in whole like this because if we give it another slice right here, it's all gonna crumble into your soup and I think it always works best when you have it this way. But it's gonna be up to you guys. I'm just showing you guys um, how I like to cut uh, my vegetables for, for our cocido. And then I'm going to be using um, the same corn that I use for the tamales, which takes a little bit more time to cook. And I just cut them into little slices like this. But if you're going to be making um, the sweet corn and adding it to your cocido, you should be okay to add all your vegetables at the same time. But for our sake, what we're going to do first is we're going to add our corn and our carrots to get the cooking process. Um, before I do that, I wanted to make sure that I tell you guys I'm going to be using uh, red potatoes. You can use whatever potatoes you have at hand, but I like Something's to. Something's boiling. Oopsie. <laughs> there you go. I like to leave the skin on because that way your potato stays whole in there. You're not going to get mashed potatoes in your in your cocido. You're going to get a good potato that everybody can just scoop up and it's perfect and the carrots the same thing if they're end up being too thick at the top just slice that one and half it and the rest just prop it in just like that okay so now that I've talked to you guys through your whole process for this um, yeah I don't think I'm missing anything oh chayote do you know what you call this in English cloud by any chance no. hold on a idea. second we need a translator real quick Okay, so we learn something new every day, especially with me speaking English and Spanish. So chayote is a squash. It's a Mer Merlinton squash. I'm probably not pronouncing it, but that's what it's considered. Um, what There was one more thing I wanted to say. Give me one second to gather my thoughts. Calabacitas. The calabacitas, yes. Um, if you're using the Mexican style, and you can also find these at the Korean market, if you're using these or any kind of zucchini that you're going to be using for your cocido, just make sure that when you chop that end, you taste it because if your if your zucchini or your calabacita is bitter, it's gonna ruin your whole uh, cocido. So, those are the things I have to say to prepare you guys for this. So now that I've said that, let's go ahead and add this to to our delicious broth and combination we have going on. Yes, You're ready I'm ready. Nap. I'm ready for that nap. <laughs> <laughs> so the first veggies we're gonna add is our corn, as I mentioned. And we're gonna let those cook for about 10, 15 minutes. Ooh, I and like then... this has a corn. Makes <laughs> it easy. Yeah, for the kids too. You know, I always look out for the kiddos. And our carrots, okay? Because mine are a little bit thicker. They're gonna take a little bit longer to cook. You have to put variety in things that your family uh, enjoys. You know, make it comfortable for your home. Make them want to ask for more, you know? Don't just feed them and give them shut up food. Like make them want to eat your food, your love. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a lid on this and I'll see you guys again in about 10-15 uh, minutes. So just the corn? Just the, cor just the corn and, and the carrots. Got it. They take a little bit longer. Okay. Okay, it's been about 10-15 minutes. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add the potatoes. Yummy! And this, this, uh, this soup is so delicious because if you don't have all the ingredients, guess what? You can still make it. Just use the veggies you have at hand and, you know, do the best you can. 
las calabacitas got some chayote my mom loves this is my mom's favorite yeah I love that too it's so good mm -hmm. if you guys have never tried it definitely if you see it in your markets give it a go and I think this particular dish would be a great way to start to give it a go yeah to give it a go go okay and now what you want to do is you want to add your uh, green beans and the green beans cook real easy so you want those at the top and same for your cabbage the cabbage you just want to put it at the top because it's just gonna it's gonna do its thing I don't know if I mentioned to you guys I took the bones out just so that I have enough space in this particular pot but you guys can leave it in if you have a big enough pot okay so now we're gonna go ahead and cook this for about 10-15 minutes until our potatoes are ready and then I'll be ready to serve all right are we done mm, yeah we're done <laughs> Our cocido is ready, so what you want to do is you want to serve it nice and hot. You want to pick your amount of broth that you want. You want to make sure you add your meat, your corn, your carrots, a variety of everything. Your papa, your potato, your cabbage option. Let's see what else. Do we miss anything for this? Did you get chayote? Yeah, you gotta dig in the chayote. Be careful when you're digging because if you've boiled it and they're all soft, you don't want your um, your veggies to fall apart, so. Maybe green beans. And then I'm gonna itemize my green beans. I'm gonna take them out so that way I can add it individually. And then if anybody wants to chew or um, get on the bone, they can. scissors. I'm going to cut them in half for the baby so it's easier for them. There we go. It comes off. And you don't have to search for your green beans. All right, now it's time for us to give us a delicious taste. Yay. I like to have my cocido with the tortilla, a nice corn tortilla. Sprinkle a little lemon or lime juice. Squeeze. Squeeze, sprinkle, you guys get it. You are like, Thank you for being a, here, Cloud. This is a unicorn trail. <laughs> sprinkle and, some glitter. Okay, now we can sprinkle some salt, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna roll it up like this. Nice and good. And you're just gonna dip it in your broth. And then it's gonna go to town. So as you're eating, you dip and... When I dip, you dip, we dip. Girl. I am my mother's daughter. Oh yeah? Mm-hmm. All right. Get ready for that nap. Mm. You have a busy kitchen today. You're cooking up I know. I have stuff. I have a lot of stuff <laughs> going on. Um, this tastes really good with chiltepines, little pepper flakes. Mm -hmm. And for my kids, I serve it with a little bowl of rice on the side, which I need to get started on. That's how I make cocido for my family. I hope you guys enjoy this recipe as much as my family does. Um, I better get to that boiling pot because I'm gonna need a nap very soon. That was a delicious tasting. Um, I wanna thank you guys so much for all your requests. Thank you so much for showing up to the tamales video. You guys know what's up. <laughs> and on that one, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, adios.